Okay, well, welcome everybody. We are so delighted to have you with us. And we have Dr. William Sears, we call him Dr. Bill, makes it a lot easier. And I'm Valerie Sayer, and we are here tonight to really welcome you and uh, help, help yourself heal from cancer, prevent possibly cancer, stay healthy, and certainly stay as vitality and, and as happy and as blissful as you can as we as we led in the evening with Dr. Bill and his beautiful grandchild singing in the background. And there, you know, it's just a wonderful way to start, you know, <laughs> alive and real. We like that. So we're we're really, really happy to be here. If you don't know Dr. Bill Sears, he uh, just had his 47th. Yes, that is not a mistake. 47th. Someone said, is that four? I said, no, 47, uh, 47th book come out and all of them are good. I'm telling you, Dr. Sears, I think every book gets better, to be honest. I have read Help Heal Yourself from Cancer twice. And if you don't know Dr. Bill, I think what makes him so good is number one is he's a really joy field filled person that loves to help. You know, he, he like, likes to call it the, the happy and healthy helper. And he'll tell you all about that. But, but also he's, you know, he's been in the field for so long. And if you don't know, he's a medical doctor and pediatrician. So he has a way of taking things that are very difficult and complicated and making it understandable and also very applicable and practical. So we are so grateful for that. And if you haven't gotten his new book, it is on Amazon. Um, and of course, you're going to be able to see on his website, Ask Dr. Sears, is it doc.com? But I have that at the end for sure. So you get that. So you've got resources. And just so you know, also, this is the type of person that you're dealing with here is his, uh, the profits from the book are all donated from to the cancer education charity too. So again, it's, it's pretty wonderful that you are able to do that. And if you don't know me, I'm Valerie Sayer, registered and licensed dietitian, keep my pharmacy technician license up. And I'm owner of Nutrition Connection Balance in Illinois, and I live in Florida. I'm a mom of five. Now, Dr. Bill's got me beat there too. He's got eight <laughs> children. I can't remember how many grandchildren. I have to keep writing it down until I have it memorized. And, and he's, we are just both very passionate. So Dr. Bill, say hello and thank you again for being with us. Oh, hello everyone. Hello. And, and I'm so glad we're doing this because uh, as Valerie mentioned, uh, we call this the helper's high. Because I believe that someone watching this tonight will have a friend who's healing from cancer or is healing themselves from cancer and what they learn tonight, they can give to their friend and their friend heals <clears throat> and they drift off to sleep tonight, feeling a high dose of the helper's high because they attended our seminar, uh, because that's what Valerie and I feel when we do this. I know. I, I always feel so lucky to collaborate with you, and I'm so glad we're doing more. We'll talk. We'll tell you about that, too, coming up. But um, if you are not familiar um, with this book, you know, I'd like to let you um, introduce us a little bit about why you wrote this book, uh, Dr. Bill. Well, uh, Valerie, this book was written on the job mm -hmm. as our family was riddled with cancer, uh -huh. brain cancer, bone cancer, blood cancer, breast cancer and colon cancer. Wow. It was literally written on the job. My wife, Martha, became a co-author uh -huh. about halfway into the book as she was diagnosed and healed well from uh, breast cancer. So we've yeah. learned a lot on the job. Yeah. And picture, picture uh, why we wrote this book is, suppose you got the call that everyone dreads Oh, Valerie, you have cancer. Mm -hmm. And right away, you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you're talk about high stress. Yeah. And then the doctor says, but we're going to do surgery, chemo, and radiation on you. In other words, yeah. that's what we're going to do for you. And today's, today's cancer care, mm -hmm. Valerie, is at an all time high. I know. But there's a missing ingredient. Yes. The person says, Thank you, doctor. But what can I do to help myself heal? Yeah. And that's, that's the missing ingredient. Yes. See? And as a doctor, doctors don't have time to teach nowadays. Right. So the book was written for two persons. One, a person who answers that question, what can I do to help myself heal? This is your plan. Uh -huh. And right. for the doctor, doctors who say, okay, 
uh, here's a book I want you to read. So it's really to uh, help yourself heal. Yeah. Uh, that's why we wrote the book. Well, we're really grateful because there's so many good things in it that remind us about things that we want to do all the time. And that's the part that is so helpful. So, you know, when we're talking about preventing and healing from cancer, I know you have some really wonderful tips that are really important. How about if you go over those with us? Uh, yes, this is just a, a summary of part one. We went all through these in part one. Yes. But I'm going to just review it. Make health your hobby. Mm -hmm. Don't need a hobby. Believe you will heal. We're going to talk a lot about that tonight. The belief effect. Because we found that the believers, those who believe they will heal, mm -hmm. heal better. Stay yeah. lean. We're going to talk, Valerie, about how obesity, mm -hmm. obesity is now the number one driver of most cancers. Yeah. Eat clean and live clean. You and I are going to you know, sprayed in America, we call it. <laughs> We're going to yeah. talk about that. Move more, sit less. You're going to learn how movement mobilizes your natural anti-cancer arm inside. Yeah. Sleep cancer away. We're going to learn a little bit about sleep, which we'll talk about later. Yes. We're going to how to partner with your doctor, how to consult a toxicologist like yourself, yeah. how to build your cancer library, and how to journal your progress. And so that's sort of a, a um, what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. And, and a lot of this was talked about in great detail in the previous talk, uh, part one. So I'm just going to fill in a, a few extra points tonight sure. in part two. Sure. And you can make sure you talk to the person who invited you. We have that recording that's still available, as well as, of course, when you hear it, you see it, you read it. It's amazing how that helps you incorporate that to be healthier and to really put these into place. So let's hear a little bit about your perspective on the causes of cancer yeah. and certainly how to conquer it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the first question I get asked is, why is cancer, cancer treatment is at all time high, but cancer is going up and up and up. Yeah. Well, here are the reasons. Number one, we have a high animal-based plant and low plant-based diet. Yeah. People who eat more plant-based and less animal-based have a lower risk. Yes. We eat a low-fiber, high-sugar diet, just the opposite. We yeah. eat a high-fiber, low-sugar diet. We sit too much. How to conquer it? You move more. Movement mobilizes your anti-cancer army inside. Yes. We eat junk foods. We eat foods that are processed in laboratories and factories instead yes. of real foods. Yeah. Stress feeds cancer. And Valerie, the last few years, uh, our country is at a, uh, the highest stress levels yet. Yeah, and great. toxin exposure, which you're going to talk about, yes. lives cleaner. And I call it sprayed in America. Oh yeah. my goodness. I know it. There's a lot of things there, right? And and but the good news is these are things, a lot of them that we can do better and start looking at and controlling. And so that's where we get to be empowered over these things. Yes. And I know this is one of the things that I think you do the best job I've heard of anyone explaining this part that a lot of people have a hard time with. So I love hearing this explanation from you about, you know, how cancer and being out of balance affects. The natural killer cells and so on. So let's hear about that and that balance. Sure. And I want to introduce you to my favorite cell in the body, the NK cell. As Valerie mentioned, natural killer cells. Yeah. All right. Now, first of all, we all have cancer cells working in our body. Yeah. By the way, we eat, live, and think. We talked about. But the good news is the great designer of the greatest design ever made, the human body knew we were going to mess it up. We mere humans. So inside our body, we have a natural conquer cancer army. I use the term conquer, uh, Valerie, because mm -hmm. it's better than cure, because yeah. sometimes you're living with cancer. Right. You've conquered yeah. it, though. But you have inside your body 
a natural conquer cancer army, trillions of cells called natural killer cells. Yes. And what happens, and follow me closely, and this is going on in all of our bodies right now as we listen and talk. A, when a cancer cell comes into your body, like that squirrely thing there, when cancer cells into your body, a, the NK cells are drawn toward it by a biochemical magnet on their cells, and they come close to the cancer cell, glom onto it, and literally fire a biochemical dart into the cancer cell and blow it up hundreds of times, thousands of times a day. Yeah. So when, you're, when the, your immune system, your NK cells are better than your cancer cells, are stronger than your cancer cells, mm -hmm. you don't get cancer, period. Yeah. Yeah. But when your NK cells are weaker than your mm -hmm. cancer cells, you have a body out of balance and you get cancer. Yeah. So and what are some cancer of the, in a nutshell? And what are some of the things? Is it mainly the things we talked about in the previous slide that sure. get those natural killer cells and yes. out of balance? And okay. and here's here's and this is so this is when I when I do cancer counseling, Valerie, yeah. that's this is the first thing I do is I say, mm -hmm. now I'll listen carefully, I want you to dwell on how you can train your NK cells to mm -hmm. fight better for you and dwell less worrying about the cancer cells. Okay. So we're gonna focus on the good news is you yes. can conquer this. Now, yeah. the things that make your NK cells fight better for you are like mm -hmm. any troops, yeah. you believe in them. Yeah. The greatest mystery in medicine, Valerie, that um, believers, those who believe their NK cells will fight better for them, actually heal better from cancer. Yeah. And how we believe this happens is when you, you know, I, I call it positive, positivity promotes longevity. Yes. When you believe, hey, I believe in you, NK cell, I believe you're gonna control that cancer, yeah. a biochemical mechanism comes into the NK cells. NK cells have little antennas on them. Mm -hmm. They're called receptors in, in biochemistry. Yes. And the, the text message from our head brain to the NK cell says, go fight for me. We believe in you. And the NK cells got it. I will. Yes. <laughs> Secondly, feed them. The better you feed troops, the better they fight for you. We're going to talk about True. how to feed them. Movement. Yes. This is yes. fantastic. Movement. When you move, mm -hmm. when you move, the yes. blood flows faster around the NK cells and makes them fight more numerous and fight stronger for you. Yes. So like Dr. Like Dr. Mom said, we're going to see you later, go outside and play. Movement. <laughs> right. movement, movement. <laughs> and, and we've become a nation of suitors. I know. That's why we have more cancer. And yes. sleeping well. You have to rest the troops so they can fight for you. So that is how. That is a, one of the best ways to fight cancer. Yes. And you just led into the sleep, which was wonderful. And, and that's uh -huh. something we're going to definitely a big problem in the United States also, and something we're going to be talking more in depth on in January. But let's let's glean a little bit from you right yes. now so we can start working on it. Sure. And uh, the one we're going to do in January, I want everybody to attend because we are going to and that talk in January, <clears throat> we're going to take you into your brain all night long, and you will be amazed what goes on yeah. in your mind and your brain and your body from a good night's sleep. We're going to go through how to get a good night's sleep, but yeah. specifically for cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is just fantastic. All right. yeah. Now, inside your brain, Let's say you're drifting off to sleep. First of all, you have what is called a glymphatic system. I call a conquer cancer 
pharmacy in your brain. Mm -hmm. And that has two parts. First of all, it has certain cells called um, glia cells. And what those cells do, they're like the brain's NK cells. And they search out for cancer cells and they search out for toxins and they search out all the junk you accumulated during the day. And then what they do, they're like garbage trucks. They get up all the garbage from the day and they dump it into a rivers of the brain called the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. And it just flows out. Yes. See, so you are um, basically, sleep is like your body's dishwasher. And uh, a few months ago, I was, um, we had some guests over for dinner and it was one of those nights that they stayed too late and I wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> and so I said, Martha, I'm going to play a little game with them. And I said, uh, uh, if you would pardon me, everyone, um, I'm going into my detox room. And they said, what? Yes, <laughs> I'm going into my detox room. <laughs> and then I explained how sleep is really your natural detox. Yes. So that is that is what most, most fabulous things that go on in sleep overnight. And I'm going to just go through an amazing, real quick, the things that go through while sleep that mm -hmm. help conquer cancer. First of all, good sleep blunts high blood sugar, yes. and high blood sugar feeds cancer. The better you sleep, the leaner you are around your belly, and as we're going to talk mm -hmm. about later. Extra belly fat feeds cancer. The better you sleep, the less stress, the less stress hormones you have circulating, and stress hormones feed cancer. The better you sleep, the more melatonin you make. And melatonin is your natural cancer healing hormone in your body. Yeah. You release natural antidepressants when you sleep mm -hmm. better. Wow. You know, it's like talk about going into the doctor's office when you sleep <laughs> and it strengthens your NK cells there we when go. you sleep. And what we've known just by statistics is sleepers, the better quality sleepers, heal better from cancer. And that's why uh, uh, Valerie's idea too is I uh, love it great is we're going to do a whole talk in January uh, where I take you into your brain at night and you'll be amazed what goes on and how to get a good night's sleep. It is. It's an exciting thing. And I think, you know, a lot of people just don't know about it. And one of the things too, Dr. Bill, that I'll go over is the whole metabolic cycle that happens at, you know, after evening happens, because it isn't okay. just, it's exactly what Dr. Bill just said. It isn't just about the detoxification, but also all of the regeneration that occurs and so many other things as far as waste also just like a dishwasher right it goes down into the sewer that's what we want you know so the same thing so very 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 important i know dr bill one of the things that i've enjoyed for years in fact when we used to have cds it was my cd i always gave to my physician friends was this particular video and this type of thing. So talk to us a little bit about this because this is such a helpful example of how our endothelial pharmacy works. Okay. And uh, here's the homework for everyone watching. Mm -hmm. It's a seven and a half minute video. So all you do is you go to my uh, website, mm -hmm. askdrsears.com and in the search bar, you enter pharmacy yeah. and that will take you into two videos and you will be amazed. Watch it with your family, watch mm -hmm. it with the kids. And, and what this is, it's, um, it actually is the most expensive video ever made. I got a grant to do it. A most expensive video ever made on your natural immune system inside. So in seven and a half minutes, you'll be amazed, wow. And what you'll see and hear actually won the Nobel Prize, that when you move, you open a pharmacy 
Yeah. And so this video will tell you the medicines you make and how to make more of them by movement. Yeah. And it really gets you not just understanding it, but it really gets you moving. And that's where I love as we talk all the time about biophilics and all these different things about nature. So let's hear your take on how important this is for our body and our brain than cancer. Well, you know, Valley, again, suppose you uh, you came into my office and I'm in a hurry and, I, and you say, well, doctor, just tell me one thing I can do, one thing yeah. I can do to heal my cancer, to heal my arthritis, to heal my depression, to heal all the stuff I have. Yeah. I would say, go outside and play. Yeah. Oh, really? Simple as that? Yes, go outside and play. Now, I learned this over in Japan, Valerie, and, and <laughs> Japan was way ahead of us in nature therapy. Yeah. And uh, Martha and I were given a talk on the brain from our healthy brain book there. Yeah. And uh, uh, after the talk, Asian lectures are very long. And so my brain was really tired. So our yeah. host, Mrs. Saganishi, said, we're going to take you and Martha out for some Shinrin Yoku, which I thought was a Japanese drink. <laughs> so uh, we get in this car and we go up to the woods, like you see here, to a tree tunnel. And yeah. we get out of this car and he said, now we're going to have some Shinrin Yoku, which is Japanese for forest bathing. Yeah. We all took a half hour walk in the woods. I felt fabulous, like a new brain. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, well, you know, it's kind of typical American, foo-foo, no science, wrong. So it went over to Nippon University and found that there was a whole department of Shinrin Yoku, yeah. uh, Shinrin Yoku, where they actually take people who have, who are depressed, or their immune system is depressed, or mm -hmm. whatever they, whatever chronic ailment they have, they take yeah. them out to the woods, like you see here, mm -hmm. and they wire them up with a lot of technology. Yeah. And then they draw every imaginable fluid from their body, and then they go on a walk in the woods. Yeah. And when they come back, they compare, they draw fluid more, and they do more technology, mm -hmm. and they found that during a half hour walk in the woods. Your brain, the, the, the system in your brain, the, the um, alert system just mellows. Yes. Your depression hormones go down. Mm -hmm. Your happy hormones go up. Yeah. Your NK cells fight better and stronger. Yeah. Your blood sugar uh, mellows and your blood pressure normalizes. Yeah. All from a simple walk in the woods. Fabulous so book. A friend of ours, uh, Dr. Eva Selhub, uh, mm -hmm. wrote it. Uh, she's a professor of, of uh, neurology at Harvard Medical School. And I called mm -hmm. her one day and said, Eva, uh, give me a quote on why movement outdoors is so important. Yeah. And she tells me, Bill, movement outdoors is like exercise squared. Uh -huh. ah, I feel good, EYE. Green peace, this gut peace. Yeah. And then, so actually, in the, uh, one of the questions I ask when the people come in for consultation, uh, my early questions is uh, Tell me, Joe, how many hours a day do you spend moving outside? And they go, What yeah. on earth does that have to do with it? I tell them. So, yeah, but, it's a good enjoy one. It. Uh, it, It's a good question, you know, and it's funny because our daughter plays volleyball. And uh -huh. she plays indoor volleyball. It's loud. It's a lot of people. She started playing beach volleyball, completely oh. different. I mean, just amazing. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, and yes. it's amazing. And see, that's a good lesson for your daughter. Valerie, yes, yes. That, that she's learning that mom was right. <laughs> play. I know, I know. It's, a, it's a really important thing to do so that's that's great I used to take the running stroller in the middle of winter there's always a way to get outside you know it's exercise just putting all your winter clothes on if you live in a winter state so luckily I don't anymore but uh -huh. when when we're fighting all those natural killer cells because we're going outside we're exercising then we want to really make sure we've got some of those important tips right for 
with the diet. So share with us some of these specific things that are, again, very helpful and I'm in agreement with. Uh, yes, this is my yeah. five favorite foods yes. for healing from just about anything, especially yeah. cancer. Yes. I start my day with a smoothie, a 15 ingredient smoothie. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the recipes are on our website and in the mm -hmm. cancer book. In the evening, at least five, six evenings a week, I have a big green salad yeah. with spices. My two favorite spices for the salad are black pepper and turmeric. Mm -hmm. Turmeric is a fantastic. Now, this has got the, end, the term antioxidant, Valerie. You'll hear that a lot. Antioxidants yeah. basically are the nutrients that give food their color. Mm -hmm. So when your mom said, put more color on your plate, yeah. she was saying, put more color on your plate for a conquer cancer diet. Because yes. what happens is, is cancer cells become cancerous often by, it's called mutation, mm -hmm. by oxidants, which yes. is the, the normal um, energy metabolism that is released when we eat. Right. So. To balance that, we needed to eat a lot of antioxidants, which are the color, the blue and blueberries, you know, the, the red and tomatoes. So put more color on your plate and yes. heal from whatever you have. Help yes. heal. Now, then uh, three nights a week, I have a fistful of salmon, wild salmon. Mm -hmm. Here's another um, exercise for you, and this is in our cancer book and our brain, healthy brain book, if you, if you looked up the number one food that had the most healing nutrients in it, 11 of them to be exact, in a measly 280 calories, it would be a filet of wild yep. Pacific salmon. Yes. Wow. It's amazing. You know, go fish. <laughs> and, and, and so that's why, um, you know, as I eat three times a week, whether yeah. I like it or not, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's funny your, how your mind goes. When you know what you're eating is healing, yes. what you have, your mind is going to convince itself, okay, mm -hmm. I'll eat it because yeah. I need to conquer my cancer. Right. And then smart snacking, number four. Yeah. Snacking, because Sugar spikes from mm -hmm. gorging feeds cancer. Yes. Cancer cells, if they could talk, they'd say, yum, you know, keep that gorging. Joe, keep that gorging, you know, and because we love the sugar spikes. That's our favorite food. And so I call it the rule of twos. Eat twice as often, mm -hmm. eat yeah. half as much, yes. and chew twice as long. Chew, chew, chew. Yeah. And, and you start that early in kids, you know, uh, kids, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've noticed in the last uh, few decades, they're becoming little wolfers, yeah. little gorgers. Yeah. Bad habit. Yeah. And so um, we have a little book called Dr. Pooh. And I tell them, you know, <laughs> the better you chew, the better you poo. Right. Uh, but, uh, whatever works. <laughs> That's right. It's important. Because <laughs> then it's got to come out. <laughs> whatever works for them. And yeah. then um, the uh, next is science based supplements, which uh, I think we're, we'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, again, science based supplements, not right. just supplements, science based supplements, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, we're going to expand on that. We wanted to just talk about a few. Um, um, things too there is that oh, I think we're going to go to that we're going to come we're going to come back to that I did move it I think I didn't delete the other one sorry about that but but we're going to talk about preloading right and growing your own garden my gosh your tower garden's bigger than you I'm impressed <laughs> uh, wow, that, I got some work to do <laughs> no. well gosh, th this is uh, uh this actually was from a friend of ours oh. too is it, is it better or not uh, well, I do but oh. it was interesting I use the term preload yes as a one word to get uh, my patients to remember something. Yeah. I'll say, you need to preload your body. Yeah. Preload to prevent. Preload to prevent. 
Mm -hmm. Primo yeah. simply means start with what we're talking about yes. tonight before you get cancer. Mm -hmm. So when the cancer hits, cancer cells come in, it's like your body is saying, no problem, Valerie, you've yeah. preloaded us. You've yeah. preloaded the immune system, so we'll go fight for you. You're okay, don't, don't worry. So um, way to be. Those, uh, I, those who um, <clears throat> are, are newcomers, in fact, tonight, talk yes. to who invited you and ask them about the tower garden, which yeah. you see here. Mm -hmm. Tower garden, oh my gosh. Uh, in fact, just, just a little bit ago, the noise in the background here was our four-year-old uh, grandson, uh, like a little squirrel, out there nibbling on our tower garden. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> and, and, uh, the, uh, uh, but it was invented at Disney World Epcot Center. Yes. Yes. And, oh, talk about delicious, nutritious. See, yes. And as a way to introduce, if kids grow it, don't eat it. So um, <laughs> that's a homework is to learn about the tower garden and ask the person who invited you. Yes, and I know, Dr. Bill, I live in Florida, you live in California, but that's the good news is there's two different kinds and there's lights so you can grow it all year round. And that is certainly one of the things that I recommend with the tower gardens, especially when we're trying to avoid toxin loads. And so again, yes. expand on that with the person that that uh, invited you tonight. Oh, look at ah, this. There, there he is. Oh my God, <laughs> he's so there's cute. Little grandson Johnny. Oh there. my there's God. The little oh I God. was talking about. There we go. Easy. <laughs> Pretty cute. <laughs> now, is he the one that was in your office today, yes. too? Yeah, bigger? he was the one that was just, oh my uh, gosh. Yes. just uh, throwing blocks all around in the background. There we go. A few of us introduced ourselves to him. So that was awesome. So, yeah, like you said. And I find, you know, the very fun thing about growing is when you do grow your own, it also tastes different. It doesn't have such a strong taste. So yes. the taste is better because like the same thing in my office, I have people that actually take it off right off and they think, you know, they kind of look around to see if anyone's looking, you know, and they'll eat a raw green bean and they'll eat the kale. So it's very fun. I, I it's one of my favorite things to do. So that's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Very nice. So you've got a really great guide also available. Can you tell us about this? Cause these are things that are really helpful tools for all of us to remember. Yes. Uh, it, if you go if, if you go on our website sdrsiris.com uh, slash healthy reminders okay healthy reminders. we have about 30 of these that you can download just like you see here ah, okay. and give them to your friends but what we're what we're doing I've done this with my patients is I have them hang them hang them all over their house yeah so when their guests come they say Whoa, where did you get this? And, and this happens to be the one for cancer, but it's for one yes. for, for just about any illness. That's why I didn't put anything about cancer up there. Right. But believe you will heal. So this is really, uh, you can download this, paste it everywhere in your house yeah. as a reminder. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. Or I need to move more. Or I need to sit, uh, I need to meditate more, agitate less, that type yeah. of thing. So yeah. this of our, we have a little over 30 now that you can download. Wow. This is one of our favorite. That's and true. Share, I didn't realize them. you had so many. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you know, what's really nice, Dr. Sears, is we've been doing lectures for years and years and months and months, and people keep adding on to their skills. But when you bring it down to, again, a reminder page, people can implement it, you know, because they understand yeah. essential fatty acids and the omega index and the wild salmon. But when you see it again, it really helps you remember. So I'm going to have to look at some of your other ones. I didn't realize you had a lot more. I've, I've seen a few wow. of them. But I didn't realize that many. So yeah, so thank you. And you can see at the bottom there for anybody too, right there, the healthy reminders. So that was the part I didn't know until healthy I- Healthy reminders. Yeah, very helpful. So thank you for that. Well, we certainly want to know more about the brain. Um, so tell us a little well, bit more about this too. Uh, the, the, uh, it's very important, Valerie, to learn about your brain yeah. when you're healing from cancer because you will be making a lot of decisions. Yeah. The brain is your chief preload officer, mm -hmm. I call it, yeah. of your immune system. Yes. 
And a phrase that I have all my patients memorize, in fact, it's on one of the healthy reminders that I have them put all over the house. Where attention flows, brain tissue grows. Yeah. Where attention flows, brain tissue grows. Okay. All right, now, all that means that the more cerebral real estate mm -hmm. that you occupy with thinking a certain thought and paying attention to a visual or a thought or an action, your brain tissue grows to replay that. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. So here's an example of a, a you know, you know, technology now is fantastic. Valerie, mm -hmm. windows into the brain, we can tell what goes on. Yeah. Well, on the left there, you see that first one there, the pre. Uh, this was a, uh, let's call him Joe, a man who was just a wreck with anxiety. He was always up and he was filling his brain with all kinds of toxic thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the toxic thought area is the size of a quarter. Yeah. Just big. Yeah. The last thing you want in your cerebral, in your brain bank, is a lot of toxic thoughts. Right. But he went to some therapy, and it's basically a, a think, think good, not bad, think mm -hmm. happy, not sad. Yeah. You know, just keep all day long, day long. Yeah. Within six weeks, his his sad center went from the size of a quarter to the size of a dime. It's amazing. Proving that you can actually change your brain. Yeah. By changing your thoughts. That and so that's where cancer healing and healing from any illness begins yes. by changing your brain. Yeah. And I know one of the things that you are so wonderful about, even when someone says, oh, you're doing a speech tonight, you have to do that. I said, no, I get to do that. I am excited. And one of the things that you're so good about is that gratitude piece. You know, and I think, you know, a lot of times it's that gratitude that helps us shift from all those worries and not just even when you're sick with, like you said, the world today and the stresses that are out there, we just can choose something different, right? Yes. And, and the, the magic word you mentioned, valid gratitude. Yeah. You know, no, no matter how life sucks, and it does sometimes. Yeah. We all yeah. have a few things to be yeah. thankful for. Yeah. And I want to grow my gratitude center. Yeah. And and so I'm we teach this in our in our office practice. Mm -hmm. so I have my my uh, parents do two things. Okay. First of all, the teenagers. Yeah, it's a group that needs help right now. Yeah, I have them post, I have them write on their cell phone wallpaper, and in a big big sheet of paper on the bathroom mirror as they're brushing yeah. their teeth and grooming. Yeah. Five things I like about me. Mm -hmm. I am funny. Mm -hmm. I am a good soccer player. Yeah. You know, I have a good family. There's something like that. five things I like about me. With yeah. the young kids, I have mom and dad or caregiver lie down with a little five or six year old. Let's just talk about five things you like about yourself. Yeah. I am funny. I am happy. I have pretty hair and they drift off to sleep. Yeah. See, they are growing their gratitude center in their brain. Yeah. And you want them to wake up that way. Yeah. But wake sure. up and look outside. And we're going to talk about that in our brain, in our sleep talk, about the best way to wake up the program yes. and preload the brain yes. to have a happy day. Yeah. I mean, it's something, again, that we can choose, which, again, is so empowering. So thank you for sharing this visual, too. And like you said, there's amazing. Same thing with exercise. When you look up, even at, at one of the gyms I used to go to where my son played tennis, they had always MRIs of the tennis players up versus the sedentary people. It was amazing. The brain is lit up because they're outside playing tennis and they're moving and they got to think, you know, and it's pretty amazing. So this is wonderful. So it's really great that we know we have that. So one of the things just, you know, here is certainly, you know, when we're talking about 
as you said, um, some of the things with toxicology, just, just to help bring that in a little bit. I'll be talking just a little bit about that, and then we'll kind of move into some of the other um, things we wanted to make sure we ended with. Yes, this is a, you know, really, this is a summary. Don't worry, be happy. Eat more fruits, vegetables, save seafood, and science-based supplements, which we're going to talk about go. later. And go outside and play. I know. And I, I like to repeat things because when you repeat it, you remember it. You know, yeah, exactly. so that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'll say reminders. I, uh huh. When I do live lectures, I have my audience repeat it and then repeat it again <laughs> and then repeat it again. And you know, it ends up being fun where people are like, why didn't I get to repeat that? You know, so that's what we want is it can be fun to learn. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. So just to add on a few things, and you've seen so many good references. There's just, you know, this this is something that I, I like to use sometimes too, where it's put out by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And you just see even here, whether you look at American Cancer Society or a www.cancer.org, or again, Dr. Sears's book is so comprehensive and practical, um, help heal yourself from cancer. You can just see that there's all these different colors. And as we talked about, as Dr. Sears mentioned, all those colors in the plant foods are those antioxidants that fight or conquer the other free radicals out there, whether it's our negative thoughts or our maybe our natural killer cells are low, all those things. So you just absolutely, one of the things you'll read consistently over and over is eating a lot of fruits and vegetables can help reduce your risk of cancer. These are exact quotes from the American Cancer Society. I like to say a few other really simple things is, when I'm working with patients too, Dr. Bill, I'll just say, can you add at least one to three servings of fruits and vegetables to every meal or snack? And they're like, how could I do that for breakfast? And I always say, that's why I've had a smoothie for 35 years of my life. You know, like you do, you can get so many greens from your tower garden. And, and uh, one of our guests tonight told me about dragon fruit. And I mean, I'm just, it's amazing what you can put in there. And even when people are, and you know, when they're working and they're busy as I was a single mom for 15 years before I got married, had a wonderful additional family. And one of the things I always did when it was really tough is we would make, you know, egg whites or a lot of vegetables saute them up and just make a beautiful full white egg, egg, egg white omelet with seven different vegetables in it. Everybody liked it with avocados on top. It was wonderful. Or even some stuffed salmon inside, you know? And so, and our kids that are all adults now, Dr. Bill, we've got um, age 21 to 26. One of their favorite meals when they come home is they say, can you make some stuffed salads while we're here? And uh, we had a hurricane recently and my son brought a few of his roommates home and they all got to have stuffed salads. And we just call that, or we cut all the different, well, six different greens from our tower garden and some herbs. We'll cut up raw vegetables like zucchini and squash and mushrooms and red onions and white onions and put all these different things in there and often salmon on top. Sometimes because I live where I can get fresh seafood, we'll do scallops or something else, but stuffed salads and they're really good. You know, even our kids love them. They ask for them as adults because, you know, it's it's easy to get a salad with one or two things in a restaurant or at home. But when you have a lot of different things, it's really fun. And I really love your resource about eating our eight part conquer cancer diet. So, again, your recipes and ideas are just all wonderful. I've used a lot of them with patients already. So thank you again for those additional very accurate and simple and specific ideas so that you can enjoy the food you're eating. Like you said, you can really enjoy it and look forward to it. It doesn't have to be difficult. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about, we kind of skipped that one slide just to talk about, you know, taking supportive and proven therapies. And I'm going to ask your opinion in a minute, but, you know, one of the things that I've recommended and use is, is the Juice Plus capsules and chewables. There's a complete powder that I often put in my, as you call it, soothe smoothie, and then a certainly essential fatty acids that are algae based. And one of the things too, that I've always added on is vitamin D. And I noticed that was on your cancer conquered list. And, you know, what's always interesting is still a lot of people aren't familiar with it, even if they've heard maybe about COVID or other things. And I had just pulled up a particular uh, study where they looked at a meta-analysis from 2013. And you can imagine how many more there are, but where they really looked at it relating to cancer. And they showed that mortality was significantly reduced when someone's vitamin D was over 50. And it was moderately reduced even in the preventative 
section of male and females, especially females. And that didn't surprise me because dealing with a lot of female hormones and hormonal issues, running a company pharmacy and having a practice, you know, vitamin D is a hormone. So it's so important to have that, you know, and so those are, those are some important things there. And, you know, Dr. Bill, what in your opinion, you know, how, how do you teach someone to select a supplement? I know what I do, but I'd like to hear from you. <laughs> well, I, 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 this is what I really enjoy in my medical practice. Yeah. Uh, Valerie is, you know, you've seen this in your practice too, that your, yeah. your patients come in with their bag of supplements. Yeah. And we doctors joke, most of those supplements go in the top end, they come out the bottom end, they never get into the bloodstream. That's right. Yeah. Because nobody studied it. Yes. So here's how I, I work through, I, I figure if I can go through their brain uh -huh. and teach them how to select any supplement. Yeah. And so here's how I start. Let's imagine you're coming in and you're asking me, well, uh, doctor, I'm so confused with all the supplements. And I, what do I take? Mm -hmm. well, first of all, you say, do I need it? Do I need it? I say, well, Valerie, do you eat 10? 10, 10, do you eat 10 fistfuls of fruits and veggies every day? Oh, I try. I can't <laughs> eat that much. That's yeah. too much. No, maybe six or seven. I no, can't. All right, do you eat three fistfuls of wild salmon every week? No, doctor, I'm a vegan and I really don't like fish. Yeah. Okay, you need it, but you don't eat it. Therefore, you must take it. Yes. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So I need fruits, veggies, berries, and an omega blend. See, there are two, the omegas that in salmon are DHA and EPA. The yeah. top two nutrients, the yes. top two nutrients in our body. Yeah. And you, an algae source is vegan. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you can be a vegan and, and get the DHA EPA. So this is yeah. why my favorite prescription in my uh, office is I call it the quad. Uh -huh. the fruit, berry, veggie, and omega blend. The quad. Yes. Yes. Well, first of all, the next week show me it makes sense. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I don't eat it. Therefore, I take it. Yes. Show me the science. And here's where supplements like Juice Plus shine. Yes. Show me the science. 45 studies and counting. Yes. But one of my favorite that you always want to ask about. Mm -hmm. It's called a bioavailability study. Yeah. In other words, you want to know what goes into your mouth goes into your bloodstream. Right. So what the Juice Plus uh, investigators did, they gave uh, people the capsules, they gave the Juice Plus to eat, and then they drew blood and found that's what the nutrients that are in the capsules went up in their blood. Yes. Ah. To me, that is the most convincing science that this is a supplement that I need to take. Yes. And show me the source. Oh, vine ripened fruits and veggies. That's great. That's yes. what I want. And so this is this is a sort of a how I do in the office. And then uh, what I see is when you go through a selection process like this, uh -huh. patients say, oh. Thank you, Dr. Bill. That makes sense. And when you hear the return, that makes sense. Then yes. you know they've understood what you taught them. Yeah. And that's so important because like you said, when someone's diagnosed with cancer or they're just trying to sift through all of the data to stay healthy, they need specific help that you can do one, two, three, or four. And I agree. I mean, I found the Juice Plus myself when I was running a compounding pharmacy, and it was the science that grabbed my attention even 20 years ago. And, and of course, oh. now, like you said, there's over 40 studies, and there were 11 at that time. And even then I said, there can't be 11. How is that possible? And I don't know about it. So I was very excited. And one of the things, Dr. Bill, that I thought we'd do, if it's okay with you, is we would show the video of you know, cancer survivors with Juice yes. Plus. Is that okay? 
Oh, perfect. Okay, Great. and it's just two minutes, so it, it's pretty short, but it's very important, and I think it helps us understand more. Studies show that even cancer survivors don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. In a paper published in the journal Gynecologic Oncology, researchers at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center investigated whether Juice Plus could help bridge the nutritional gap between what cancer survivors should eat and what they actually do eat. In this study, funded by the National Cancer Institute, the National Institutes of Health and the Juice Plus Company, 51 women who had survived stage two to four ovarian cancer were randomly divided into two groups. The first group was told to follow the Women's Healthy Eating and Living Study Diet, WHEL, which includes a recommendation to eat 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. The other group was told to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, but to also take Juice Plus Orchard and Garden Plant capsules, as well as a Juice Plus Complete Shake every day. Because of the risk of their cancer recurring and the importance of fruits and vegetables in a post-cancer diet, there was no placebo group. Instead, the researchers compared results between the two groups. After six months, they found that both diets increased blood levels of key antioxidants like carotenoids. They also observed that both diets were able to stabilize key markers of cancer and that both diets help maintain health-related quality of life. In short, the results showed that the five-a-day diet, which also included the Juice Plus products, was equivalent to the WHEL 10-a-day diet by various measures assessed. The researchers also found that the women following the five-a-day diet with Juice Plus products had better protein status than those following the 10-a-day diet. And last but not least, they found it easier to comply with the recommended diet. This study confirms once again that Juice Plus provides health-effective nutrition based on fruits and vegetables. All right. Well, thank you for letting us watch that. It, it just, you know, it helps be people remind again, like we talked about, we want to try to get 10 or more and we want them to be good in a variety. And they just showed where, again, it's very hard to do for people. And, you know, if they can eat, try to aim for five and take their juice plus and their complete powders and their smoothies, which we know they can get more that way, you know, that it's very effective. So thank you. I think that was very helpful to kind of keep putting it all together. Right. Yeah, that, thank you, Valerie, for showing that. That was very, yeah. uh, very, very good. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things we're going to talk just a little bit about, and then we're going to make sure we move into how to wisely partner, because I know a lot of you today were something that, and some of the people that couldn't come tonight really wanted to learn about, were the toxins, and again, that partnering up besides those important things to exercise outside and, and get your natural killer cells up and be in gratitude, is really just trying to realize how to eliminate or reduce your exposed to toxins. And if you're exposed to them, how to get rid of them or reduce them more. One of the things, if you're not familiar, is the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer says that cancers are about seven to 19% responsible from toxins. Now, when we say toxins, one thing I wanna say before we start talking about glyphosate just a little bit, is that does include smoking, obesity, environmental things that we've talked about. So it's not just a being exposed to a toxin that is from the environment or a metal or something like that. So I wanna make sure we're clear on that. However, the reason we talk about glyphosate uh, quite a bit these days is because it's more and more in also the foods that we're trying to eat more of. So we've got to be buying organic and growing tower gardens and looking at things like Juice Plus that has the NSF standard. It's not just that it's treated ripened and controlled, but also they test after it's been manufactured, where it's been picked, travels in the truck, goes to the plant processing plant that it's been tested after it's broken down for pesticides, herbicides, and contaminants. So it's really important to understand that there's so many reasons 
that we're very aligned, Dr. Bill and I, on some of these topics. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we look at is glyphosate. We talked a little bit about it before, but it's a particular toxin that's in, again, a lot of foods that we're encouraging you to eat. And so we've got to be very careful about getting good products, not getting a lot of processed products that aren't tested. And I thought I'd just show you an example of someone, and this is three out of more, she did more than three, but just from March of 2021, this was a cancer survivor that had cancer three times, a very smart woman that said, there's got to be something more I can do. After having it three times, she said, something's just got to give here. And she came to me, and when we tested her glyphosate, it was 9.95. It was actually the highest I've ever had to this day. I mean, it's not even on the chart. You don't want to be above 2.5, and you really want to be in the yellow, which is about 0.45 or under, just as you can see. But just you want to be to the left. And you can see the scale at 95th percentile is 2.5. She was 9.95. And so it was not really a surprise that there was reoccurring cancer. We had worked with, again, the diet environment, the right types of things, and it was amazing how responsive she was. In fact, she's she's one of my favorite women that I, I'd love to get in a poster because now she likes even exercising with weights, you know, and it's amazing that someone in her 70s is just embraced everything and loving it, you know, and by the time we got into a year into it, we got our glyphosate down to 3.9. And you can see still not even on the chart, right? So luckily, she's still been cancer free now for many years. And the most recent level was 0 0.7, almost, almost to the ideal level. And it was really wonderful. And what we did is we just started really paying attention to how she was growing her foods, what she was picking, making sure that she was in environments. And she quit and drank a lot less alcohol, things like that, that can still have glyphosate in them. So when you're thinking about environmental toxins, it's a really easy test. You just urinate in a, in a bottle and, and in a little plastic container, and then we look at it. But when we talk about how to avoid those things, if you're not measuring it, it's reducing and trying to eliminate your exposures, then releasing the toxins through the fruits and vegetables, through the good sleep, through the smoothies, through the fruits and vegetables. And then if it's not coming down, there's a few things that I can do like glutathione and so on that we're not going to get into tonight to bring those out. But be very careful when people say they do detoxing things because people just pick things on the internet again and it's not an accurate way to reduce toxins most of the time some of the things that we do once they're released is you have to make sure they go out of the system is eliminated and that's through the same things that we've just talked about this whole time clean fruits and vegetables clean and proven scientific supplements and fiber remember the fiber again where those come from, the plant foods, the nuts, the seeds, the fruits and vegetables, here we are again. So we have this circle. So even when we take something that seems complicated, like a toxic metal or a non-metal environmental toxin like glyphosate, do you see how it still comes back to you can't outdo the nutritional part I teach people. Even if we have to do some medical detoxing, we have to still have the foundation for things to work right. So I hope that helps a little bit because I know we come back to that a lot sometimes and people just want to take things. And I say, you've got to improve your diet and your choices and your growing. So any anything there you'd like to add, Dr. Bill, that just, I don't want to go into it too much more than that, but I know I want to give an example specific to cancer, you know? Yes, I'll, I'll add my own personal example, uh, Thank you. Valerie, which I mentioned in our first talk, yeah. is uh, uh, there was a missing person in my whole healthcare provider a team, and that was a toxicologist. Because I got leukemia, and I thought, how can a health nut like me get leukemia? Yeah. Something's going on in my toxic environment. I called you. Yeah. Immediately, you sent me the kit. Yeah. Through uh sent it back and my glyphosate level was sky high. Yeah. Finding out that they sprayed every morning with glyphosate on my golf course and I played at the same time they were spraying. Yeah. Stopped playing golf for three months, so my glyphosate level went down to a third of the level. Yeah. So that was my first experience with a toxicologist 
Now I recommend a toxicologist as part of your whole yeah. Anchor Cancer team. And thank yeah. you, Valerie. Oh, so gosh. For me. Well, it was, uh, you know, important and it also got us to getting to know each other more. So I'm grateful for that opportunity. And, you know, I'm sorry that happened. It was certainly a, you've helped so many people at the golf course and neighbors just with that awareness with the golf course changing. And and that was where there was a new exposure. So, again, just not having the exposure as well as your good habits got your levels down. And that's why that the dietary things are so darn important. I mean, you just can't be without them you know so so really terrific so thank you and chapter nine in dr sears's book has wonderful resources uh that will help you understand this more also so thank you dr bill so i know dr bill one of the things we promised last time that i thought was really one of the incredibly incredibly helpful parts of your book that isn't just for cancer but really even when you learn can help with any practitioners how to wisely partner with cancer care providers in this case to get the best personalized treatment. So do you mind expanding on that a little bit? Because that was one of the biggest things we had requests for last time. Uh, yes, because you, you, you want to, uh, you're, you're the team quarterback for yeah. your whole cancer care provider team. Yeah. So the first thing you want to do is tell them you want personalized care. Yeah. And you don't want statistics. Like you go in and they say, well, uh, Valerie, uh, your cancer or Bill, your cancer has a 40% survival rate. Say, doctor, please, I'm a person, not a percentage. Yeah. Let's not go into those statistics, which don't mean much anyway. Yeah. So that's first of all. Secondly, the more you go into programs like we're talking about tonight, if you went in to your doctor and you talked about uh, my omega-3 index or my glyphosate level mm -hmm. and all that, the doctor would say, oh my goodness, what a sharp patient. I better, <laughs> I better up my uh, teaching and I better do my research. Yeah. And finally, uh, ask and you shall receive. When Martha got her breast cancer, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've been married 57 years and my wife got breast cancer. Oh my goodness, yeah. what I do? And so I poured through research and I found there were new studies called genetic testing because there's a missing ingredient in cancer treatment. That is, it's not just you have cancer cells, but you want to know how virulent they are mm -hmm. or how bad they are. And so there are genetic tests to show how bad they are. So mm -hmm. I called the oncologist and they, she was all scheduled for chemo in two weeks. And I said, well, how about this new uh, genetic test? A doctor said, well, it's kind of expensive, $3,000. And it's kind of new. I don't think that's gonna show anything, but I wonder, so I did it anyway. Get a mm -hmm. call two weeks later, Bill, I'm happy to report that the test shows she does not need chemo. Had I not asked, asked the question, Martha would have been in chemo. Yeah. So get opinions, ask questions, ask doctor, are there new tests available, yeah. like genetic tests yeah. for how virulent my cancer is? So yeah. that was just one example of how homework uh, saved my dear wife from needing chemo. Yeah. And and certainly when it becomes personal, right, which we have, we all know someone that we love that has battled with something. It's really important to ask those questions, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, and we are going to take questions at the end, everybody. So I know there's going to be a few questions about that and we'll, I promise we'll do that. We just want to just go back to the slides for one minute and just wrap that up. And then we will take questions if, if that's okay, Dr. Bill, if you have oh, time. Sure. To, okay. So we always like to make sure we know that we're wrapping up the year. You always can go to www.askdrsears.com. He's got so many wonderful resources on the website. 
anyone of any age, it's wonderful for, and especially for parents. I mean, I was using your book way before I knew you in a pediatric center in Cleveland. So, you know, it was great when I was a lactation consultant because it was, it was real, you know, so great resources. You can go to my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com if you're interested in the toxin testing or have want to learn other things and communicate with the person that invited you today because they have resources like these where Dr. Sears is going to be talking about children with another wonderful Valerie. Valerie Miles is a wonderful lady and pediatrician also and Dr. Pohl and Dr. Odom who are gynecologists. And so he'll be doing that December 1st. So that person that invited you and please try to RSVP so that they know that you're on so they can follow up with you and to make sure there's enough space. Then December 7th, we've got one on respiratory resilience. And then we're going to do one that Dr. Bill and I are really passionate about also with sleep. And that'll be Wednesday, January 25th. We don't have a flyer yet. We just Worked on that a little bit today, so we'll get that going for you, but you can mark your calendars and um, we'll do the same time and Wednesday, January 25th. So thank you. We want to keep you healthy. We want to give you good information. And as Dr. Sears you know, says, we, we love being the helper as well as people that invited you to keep us all healthy and vibrant. So um, go ahead. Anybody that would like to uh, ask a question, um, and just try to keep it short and pertinent to the group. And um, go ahead and just make sure you unmute yourself and introduce yourself so we know who you are and where you came from, you know, what state or, uh, or if you're from another world, that's fine too. We'll, we'll, we'll accept anybody here today. We're all, we're all special and weird sometimes, right? So, <laughs> so anybody have a question for Dr. Bill Sears or myself? I know the provider one, I thought for sure we'd have a few people with that one, because I know I've had patients ask me about that part of your book. You know, uh, let's see if anyone has a question first before I ask it for someone else. So just make sure you unmute yourself. I know I can't see everybody. We've got a few pages here. Anybody have a question? No one have a question? Okay, someone's got their hand up. I, can't, I don't know who you are, but go ahead and unmute yourself. Looks like by phone. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, my name's Amy, and Jody invited me tonight. Okay, wonderful. Have, well, um, thank you. One of my best friends has colon cancer, stage four, right now, and she's going through chemo. Okay. Um, are there any vegetables or fruits that are better than others to help her as she's fighting this? Mm -hmm. Or the juice plus? I mean, anything that would be more beneficial to her than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Sears, you want to answer first? Uh, so well, uh, Julie, uh, unfortunately, the question you asked happens to be a cancer that I'm an expert on because I that was my first cancer. I had colon cancer. Yeah. And had to go through that same thing with radiation and chemo and all that and figure out the uh, answer. Well, first of all, there's where a smoothie comes in. Yeah. So in our book, we have the Cancer Cancer Smoothie. And when basically a smoothie, the blender does the work at the top end. Yeah. So your colon has to do less work at the bottom end. Yeah. Okay. That was easy. Right? <laughs> so that's, that's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, secondly, you want, I call it the sipping solution. Instead of gorging, you sip on the smoothie throughout a lot of the day, yeah. so that it's a, so that most of it's absorbed in your intestines and has less wear and tear on the healing colon. So the uh, and in our cancer book we have a whole section just for colon cancer. Yeah, the diet, the habits. And I would get one of those for your friend. And as uh, uh, Valerie mentioned, we donate all the profits from our cancer book to yeah. charity, cancer yeah. education charity. So uh, order a book on Amazon, write a nice review, uh, give it to your friend. And there's a lot in there on uh, the diet for colon cancer. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bill. And, and Amy, uh, is it Jody Kindle who invited you? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, so she also can uh, give you some recipes also from um, a recipe book too that she'll have while you're waiting for the book. Um, and one of the sure, things that I do- the, yeah. And the quad, the quad would be a yeah. very good thing to, to, to ask yeah. the person to get to. The quad would be excellent. And yeah. for the quad, the Omega blend is excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a blood test called the Omega-3 index, a one drop of blood to sh show you how high your uh, omega-3s are. And it helps to have healing, healing if your omega-3 level is above 8%. Yeah, yeah. I remember that number because you could ask your doctor about it and say, whoa, what's the omega-3 index? So that elevates yeah. you as a smart patient. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Amy, sometimes too, like um, Dr. Sears said, when someone, if they are having a harder time digesting things, depending on the treatment or nausea or anything else, you can also open the capsules of the Juice Plus mm -hmm. and you can put them in the smoothie. And I also recommend, you know, depending on how she's doing, you know, sip it throughout the day. And even if it starts with a teaspoon or an ounce, yeah. that it works really well. So and another little tip too, I call it a hot salad. I love salads, but mm -hmm. during healing from colon cancer, you can't eat, uh, eat that much salads. So yeah. I would take my usual salad and I would steam it for three minutes. Yeah. And wilted. It was so much easier to digest on the colon. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, Amy, how was that? Did we give you enough ideas? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. And I'm sorry about your friend and thank you for asking the question. We hope she heals fast. Can you hear me down here? This John Sayer. Okay, John, John. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thanks. Yeah, I'm on a closed circuit, so you won't see, uh, there's no camera on my system. I have a friend of mine that just went through surgery today because he had colon cancer. Doctor said right away, well, we've got to take care of it and cut it out and go through. He had that done. And uh, some severe side effects from that as he got septic, as the sutures inside of him ruptured and he became septic and almost died. So today he had his surgery uh, where they're reconnecting everything. And he's been uh, you know, walking around with a colostomy bag for the last three months. So the question that I have from this story is, you know, it kind of touched me. This is my roommate from college. So this is one of the first people that's been close to me that's had cancer. And, you know, I've had my own battles with injuries and things, but when it comes to doctors, you know, you, you go to a doctor and everybody says, oh, they're great. Because you're never going to go to the doctor that, and they say, oh, they're terrible. And they give it a, you, you get a, a prescription from a doctor who says, oh, my goodness, you have cancer. And everybody says, well, you're supposed to get a second opinion. But to get a second opinion sometimes takes two to four weeks just to get an appointment. And you're scared to death and you want to get on it right away. And time is of the essence. And so is it always a process where you, you would recommend a second opinion or is there a way to push that button to get to where you are really comfortable? You know, because if you go to one doctor, you hear one thing, you go to another doctor, you hear another, then you're truly confused. So you know to go to a third to get two out of three. You know, <laughs> I'm talking about. Um, you know, you're, you're right about getting a second or third opinion. Uh, but one thing that helps is to go to a cancer center. See, there are centers approved by the National Cancer Institute. And that's the first thing I would recommend. Go to a cancer center approved by the National Cancer Institute. And they're usually at major universities. And they will get you right in. Okay. If you call them and say, here's all my, I have all my lab tests and everything. Uh, how soon next week can I come in? They'll they'll find an appointment for you. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's that's great because you know Valerie and I live in beautiful Port St. Joe, which I call Hooterville by the sea or uh, Mayberry, and uh, you know the hospital here is kind of local. So it's not like uh, back in Chicago where you've got these massive hospitals with tons of resources. So yeah. to look for a university based is usually a pretty good place to start. Uh, that's where you want to go. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Sure. Thank you, John. Angie, go ahead. We'll yeah. take that last question. Go ahead, Angie. Um, Hi, it's Angie. not so much a question, but um, I worked I worked for Valerie, but I, I worked with her because I had cancer. Um, and I also have Lynch syndrome. So um, 
I tested, I did the glyphosate testing and, and other toxins through her, um, through NCB. And I lived in Illinois. So my glyphosate was up and some other different toxins, got them down. And then I moved to South Dakota. So I'm in a whole new environment. I'm exposed to new things. And now um, some things went up. So I have to kind of be, um, a, yeah, I don't know if I want, I, I need to be very careful and find where they're coming from and how to reduce that. And so I am so thankful, especially with Lynch syndrome, because I don't have all the capabilities that someone else has, you know, with the certain mismatch I have in my DNA. But I just want you to know I'm so thankful to have these tests out there because it's not a normal testing that my oncologist does and how important it is to keep my body free from toxins. And so I know there's a, another um, opportunity to get these tests done coming up. And so I just wanted people to be aware of that. Oh, well, that was Andrew, thank you. And as you're talking, I'm thinking, you would be a wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, yes. you learn so much. So my wish for you is you develop a following. Okay. And teach other women what you learned, other persons what you learned about asking the right questions and about getting your toxins measured. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and Angie's a great, um, you know, example. Um, and thank you for sharing that, Angie, because of uh, very rare. And um, she's done incredibly well. And her specialists have been very impressed also. And so we're we're really, we're grateful that, um, you know, she's making all her efforts too. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. I thank you all for, you know, thank you all for participating in this. It's been a yeah. good team effort. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you, uh, can I say one other yep, thing? Yep, no. Go ahead. Dr. Sears, this has been interesting because of my rare and aggressive cancer that I had. They, um, and I, I did the surgery through Northwestern Hospital in Chicago, right? And a doctor who worked out of there. And they wanted me to be part of a research program. But I, and so I did because they were amazed. Um, but I found I had to drop out because they're waiting for me to get cancer again. And the questions they asked me fed my brain really horrible things mm -hmm. that I would come home in a panic and not sleep and oh. just overthink that. And so mm -hmm. I want to help in a different way. So thank you for sharing that. But isn't Thank that you, interesting that, yeah. that it, it led me to that point and I had to back out of the, the research? Yeah. 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 Clinical trials are a good way of helping uh, advance cancer. And uh, sometimes they work for you and sometimes they don't. So Angie, you, you, you're, you're developing a, a, a wisdom about decisions that are best for you and keep that up. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's a really wonderful way to end the evening is is because we talk a lot about that. It still has to be what's best for you, but hopefully you feel like you all have more empowerment for prevention. If you're a cancer survivor, if you have cancer, as we said, we all have things waiting for us. And we're so grateful that you would spend your evening with us. And uh, you know, we hope you are all wonderful. And Dr. Sears, thank you as always for your precious time and your efforts and everything that you do for all of us and everybody okay. else. Thank you for your gratitude. Thank and you, Valerie. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much.